Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to present on behalf of co-authors our work on genomic analysis of 733 R2 positive breast cancers, identifying recurrent pathway alteration associated with entire two resistance. I have no disclosure. R2 is an oncogenic protein expressed on the surface of the breast cancer cells, activated by the formation of homodimers or heterodimers with the other receptor of VR family. And the proliferative effect mediated by HER2 is associated with its complex downstream signaling that mainly converge in MAP kinase pathway and PI3 kinase AKT10 pathway. Entire two antibodies and their two tyrosine kinase inhibitors use many mechanisms of action resulting in antitumoral effect. One of these is blocking the downstream over two cascade at different levels. And for years, the reactivation of Pietri kinase pathway has been considered the main player over two signaling resistance, while MAPK pathway has been less investigated. In our work, we choose to focus specifically on these two key pathways and how they are involved in their two blocked escape. There is a significant amount of literature demonstrating that PIK3CA alteration confer a phenotype of resistance in breast cancer cells, as showed in this preclinical study of the Netherlands group. Cells carrying PIK3CA mutation or OP10 alteration in yellow, blue, and red, respectively, appear to be resistant when treated with trastuzumab. And the prognostic value of these alterations is pretty clear if we look at the Cleopatra Kaplan Meyer curves stratified for pic 3 ca status. Regardless of the addition of pertuzumab, patients with pic 3 ca mutant tumors represented by the continuous line had a worse outcome. And moving on the MAPK pathway, the literature data is limited. In our previous work evaluating the landscape of breast cancer, we noted that in normal receptor negative R2 positive tumors, the metastatic sample were enriched in NF1 alterations. And from this observation, we decided to look more closely on MAPK and Pietri K alteration in our internal court, with the aim to investigate the significance of this alteration belonging to the, these two pathways. In this work, we included patients with R2 amplified tumors per MSK impact who underwent prospective tumor sequencing between April 2014 and February 2021. We used an analytic pipeline that allowed to integrate all clinical information with genomic data. And the hypothesis generated from this analysis has been eventually validated in lab. We sequenced overall 733 tumor samples from 664 patients with their two positive bre metastatic breast cancer, 385 samples from metastatic site, and 348 from primary tumors. Piatri kinase pathway alteration, as expected, were larger represented with PIK3CA mutation detected in 33% of metastatic samples and 28 of the primary tumors. Interestingly, genes belonging to MAPK pathway have been found with genomic alteration. This pathway includes RBB2, AGFR, NF1, and all the genes included in the red box. And the most frequent alterations were found in NF1, 7% of metastatic sample and 4% in the primaries, and in R2, the majority mutation, 7% in the metastatic sample and 3% in the primary. Overall, the MAPK alterations were more frequent in the metastatic samples compared to the primary tumors, 15.6% versus 9.8%. And this difference was statistically significant, suggesting that this alteration could have a role in acquired resistance. In this court, there was no positive association or mutual exclusivity noted between MAPK and PI3K pathways alterations. To evaluate the role of this alteration on patient outcome, we look at a cohort of metastatic breast cancer patients homogeneously treated in first line with taxan-based chemotherapy, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab. 
all patients had sequenced pretreatment samples as per inclusion criteria. We identify 145 patients, and these are the patient's characteristics. The majority of patients presented with recurrent disease, only 18% with the novo metastatic. And the sequenced samples were from a metastatic site in 63% of cases, 37 from the primary tumor. And from a molecular standpoint, 80% of tumors were to amplified per MSK impact. PIC3CA mutation were detected in 28% of cases and MAPK 15.8%. And these numbers were consistent with what I previously showed in the larger court. We evaluated progression-free survival stratified for PIC3C mutations, RBB2 amplification per MSK impact, and MAPK alterations. As expected in our court, the median progression-free survival of PIC3C mutant patient represented by the green line was significantly shorter than patients with PIC3CA wild type tumors. And these curves are consistent with the course of, of the Cleopatra trial. In addition, patients without RBB2 amplification per NGS, represented in blue, had a worse outcome on HP compared to patients with amplified tumors, suggesting that NGS is able to detect very precisely their two cancer cells addiction. And moving on MAPK, we found that patients with alteration in MAPK pathway genes had a median progression free survival of only 9.9 months compared to the 21 months of the MAPK wild type group. And this difference was statistically significant with an hazard ratio of 2.03. In the multivariable analysis, after adjusting for PIC3CA mutations, RBB2 amplification per NGS and sample type metastatic versus primary, MAPK alteration remain associated with a worse PFS with an hazard ratio of 2.2. And this finding suggests that the MAPK alteration are independently associated with a worse outcome. So far, I showed the MAPK alteration found on pretreatment samples are associated with a rapid progression on HP and we did not have enough paired pre and post-treatment samples to show the development of, of this alteration after treatment exposure. But here we want to show a representative case of our court, 38 years old patient with the novo metastatic R2 positive breast cancer, received THP with an initial response maintained for more than two years when she experienced a oligo progression on a right axillary adenopathy. The sequencing of this single cytoprogression revealed a large NF1 intragenic inversion in the chromosome 17, as shown below, resulting in a loss of function of the protein. And this alteration was not found in the pretreatment sample. And for this reason, we believe that the acquired loss of NF1 was responsible for the clinical progression. The lab validation has been conducted in Chandler Labati Lab by a brilliant postdoc, Alison Smith and colleagues. And the full paper of this work has been published three weeks ago on Nature Communications. We found that L2 positive breast cancer cell lines silenced for NF1, represented by the green and the pink lines, were resistant to the three currently approved L2 TKI, starting from the left, lapatini neratinib, and tucatinib. And when R2 resistant cells silenced for NF1 were exposed to AKT inhibitor, cells continued to replicate, suggesting that PIC3CA pathway was not involved in the resistant mechanism induced by NF1. While when the same cell lines were treated with, R with ERK or MEK inhibitors, the cell replication were inhibited. And similar results were obtained when MAC inhibitors are used to treat R2 resistant cell lines carrying other MAPK alteration, such as R2 mutations represented in green and KRAS represented in violet. These results were confirmed on xenograft model as well. Trametinib, a MAC inhibitor, 
was effectively reducing the tumor volume in NF1 silenced tumors only, violet line, compared to the resistant tumor NF1 profusion. And in a patient derivated xenograft with NF1 loss, tramedinib alone or in combination with trastuzumab was able to reduce the tumor growing. At this point, a question came in our mind. What about antibody drug conjugates? Are they effective on these tumors carrying MAPK alterations? And the answer is yes. EDXD, as nicely showed in these curves, was effective in the inhibition of the replication of NF1 loss cells. And these effects may be related to the multiple mechanisms of action of these agents that are not limited to the blockade over two signaling. Pietric mutation has been already recognized as a potentially target to treat entire two resistant tumors. And two clinical trials with Pietric A inhibitors are currently ongoing. The EPIC B2 study, a phase three trial with alpelisib and HP in the maintenance phase, and another phase one study with copalisib and HP again in first line. Our data showed that MAP kinase alteration is a new intriguing mechanism of resistance over two signaling potentially targetable. In conclusion, our work showed that for the very first time, genomic alteration of MAPK pathway genes are involved in the resistance to HP and R2TKI in metastatic R2-positive breast cancer. This resistance could be possible acquired as suggested by the enrichment in the advanced cancers versus primary. Not surprisingly, PIK3CA mutation and absence of BB2 amplification by NGS are associated with worse outcome on HP in our court. And R2 resistant tumors that arbor MAPK pathway alteration seems to be sensitive to MEC and their inhibitors. And there is a urgent need of clinical trials to validate their use in patients with R2 positive breast cancer in combination with entire two agents. This is my acknowledgement. This work would be not possible without all the colleagues and the association listed in this slide. In particular, I want to thank all the breast medicine translational program of MSK, Dr. Razavi and Shander Lapati for the guidance, all the colleagues of the breast medicine service of MSK, all patients and their families. And thank you all for the attention and I'm happy to take any question. <laughs>